Interestingly enough, uh, my quest for CPM on the TI-99 for a computer really um, started with this book. David Al's uh, Basic Computer Games. Actually, more Basic Computer Games. This is his second book in the series, um, which uh, he published in 1979. This one was pub first published in 1980. Um, and what this consisted of was uh, a bunch of uh, type-in, very uh, text-oriented games. Um, they were a lot of fun. Most of them were interesting um, for the era anyway. I mean, this is not Crisis. Um, but one in particular um, that caught my attention was called uh, Sea Battle. And it was this fantastical um, uh, naval warfare game um, with enemies and torpedoes and missiles and above and beyond, um, most importantly, um, kind of rudimentary graphics, as you can see here, with an island and the enemies represented by various characters. There was only one hitch, however, and that was uh, that it required 80 columns to run, um, whereas our TI uh, only had 32 columns, at least um, in basic and extended basic. Uh, <coughs> you could access a 40 column mode um, called text mode, um, but for that you re it required um, uh, the editor assembler system, uh, which was uh, well beyond and above what I had uh, at the time back in the early 80s. I did my best to uh, try to adapt the program to 32 columns, but it just did not work at all. So I gave up, and the years passed, and um, I've always wanted to play that game. Um, eventually I ended up uh, typing it in on uh, an IBM PC Junior, um, with uh, IBM BASIC, um, which worked just fine, and it gave me an idea what the gameplay was, and it was an interesting game, um, but my, uh, my itch to run it on a TI never left me. And then, lo and behold, we had a wonderful device called the Tippy uh, come up over the past year, uh, or two, I think, um, which is basically a Raspberry Pi mated to a uh, peripheral expansion box card which lives inside that uh, PEB box um, and basically provides um, uh, additional storage, access to the internet and essentially all the features available on uh, the Raspberry Pi but now accessible to the TI um, including mouse support. <coughs> And uh, another development which was uh, uh, which made it all possible um, for to run CPM on the system was the advent of CPM emulators for the Raspberry Pi, um, and I uh, decided to use one of them called Run CPM. So um, I gave it a shot, and um, let's show you what that does. So I'm going to go into the uh, TP operating system called force command and um, we're going to telnet into the Raspberry Pi, um, like I said, living inside the peripheral expansion box. So we're going to load the telnet program, switch to capital letters. We're going to pick 80 columns. The reason we can do 80 columns on the TI in this day and age is because of this wonderful uh, modification called the F18A, which is a board that replaces the uh, original um, video chip on the TI. So we pick 80 columns. We're going to go to local hosts and port 23. And there we are. We are currently. Uh, logging into the the uh, Tippy or the Raspberry Pi uh, via Linux. So uh, why don't we log in? And there we are. So this is your 
usual Raspberry Pi um, uh, Raspbian uh, operating system. Nothing fancy here. Um, it essentially acts as a text console because um, we're really accessing it via talent. But the interesting part is if we go to the run CPM directory oops that's not gonna work let me change and use a CD CPM there we are so now if you run run CPM are in CPM. Um, this is I have two drives set up. I have drive A which contains most of the files including the most important um, mbasic.com uh, basic interpreter from Microsoft. And so uh, I went ahead and laboriously, and I mean laboriously, this uh, program is what over uh, over 600 lines long, um, and uh, there are there were a lot of syntax errors, um, and uh, oops. and it it took a while. <laughs> um, I finally finished debugging it uh, last night. So there it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and load it. So let me start uh, mbasic first. All right, and there we are. We're in the uh, basic 85 CPM version by Microsoft. And let's load um, CBAT. There we are. And if we list it, It's, uh, it's a long program, but here we are. I'm actually running um, CPM on a TI-99 4A. Now mind you, there were a couple of cards produced um, back in the 80s that allowed you to run CPM on the TI, uh, but there were only 40 columns, which is really inconvenient for CPM programs and frankly not very practical. And they did not really uh, uh, take a good foothold in the TI community. I believe there are only maybe a handful in within in collectors' hands currently, and I'm not even sure if they're even functional or complete. In any case, why don't we run C battle? And, and so okay, and um, we can see a list of commands. Why don't we look at the map? And as you can see, it runs perfectly fine. This is my submarine. Um, these are enemy ships. These are monsters. These are mines. Um, these are unknown spots. And this is these are my headquarters. So the objective is basically to destroy all the uh, enemy subs without getting destroyed uh, myself or being eaten by a uh, sea monster. Easier said than done. I'm not going to play too much here, but uh, we can just go and just move it along for a little bit. Let's go for maybe four. So my headquarters were ramped. I don't know why. Let's take a look. Oops. My sonar is under repair. What the hell? Okay. Let's go down again. see what uh, what kind of trouble we're in here let's see the damage report okay so my sonar is damaged for some reason what I must have bumped into something but it didn't tell me anything about this ah okay well that's problematic because I don't know where I'm going at this point so uh, best to just uh, wait and see in any case, I'm not going to play through an entire game here, um, but um, you get the idea. That was really the whole purpose of this quest this, uh, from the 1980s, which I finally fulfilled. So um, check one from, uh, from the list on my bucket list. Um, and that's it. So let me know if you have any questions uh, about this process. Otherwise, thanks for watching.